Okay, this will be a short video today. I haven't done one for a little while. Um, as you can see, if you've seen any of the old videos, we're somewhere new right now. Um, this will be Marginalia HQ. And we sorted it out the other day after a few months of vacillation because I'm not earning money right now. I haven't been for um, some months. Um, I'm very worried about money. I've been underemployed all my life and I'm trying to change that by doing something for myself but right at the moment it's kind of hard for me to believe that I can earn money through things like Patreon, uh, Libra Pay, even Bitcoin, any of these kind of new ways of crowdfunding um, projects and things like that. So I'm working on the first issue of Marginalia it feels like I really got down to it properly even two days ago. Um, I've had my routines broken and changed. I've been working on vineyards in Moravia. I've been working, doing landscape gardening. I've been just having a couple of kind of students for um, teaching English here, uh, private students. I've been teaching Lego, coding for kids, and all of this kind of stuff, chopping and changing, and uh, by virtue of the fact that I am autistic, that's really difficult for me. So the other day I had a bit of a meltdown, and um, I was writing a lot of kind of um, messages to my girlfriend Woodstock on Keybase, which we both use. I use it on the command line on my uh, laptop, on which I run Cubes OS, and she uses it just on her normal Android mobile phone. Um, and she finds it easy, easy enough to, to, to kind of communicate me with it as if it were another app like, I don't know, WhatsApp or whatever. She used it as if it were the same thing. But I had a bit of a meltdown. It wasn't the first. Um, I find it very challenging when I don't have a routine, and I haven't had a routine. But I think the other thing really is that I haven't fully committed, or I've I've been committing and then pulling back and then committing again. And that happens, and it has to happen every time I kind of re-engage with a given project um, because I live inside of that project for that time. I have to construct my own mental environment in a way that most neurotypical people, most people who are not autistic, don't have to do. And I have to do that every time that I move from one environment to another. So going away for the weekend, eating different food and being in Moravia and working with uh, vineyards and being surrounded by different people means that then I get into that environment and then re-engaging is very difficult. And over the last few months, I've been working either upstairs, which is a kind of broken um, routine in itself because it's um, we're in the basement of the, of the flat where... Uh, where we live right now. And of course, being at home, you have the internet, you have all kinds of distractions, and it's set up as well for your life uh, in a different way. So really having a different environment here would be very big for me. But it is also an extra kind of expense that right at the minute, it's, it's a real strain. And of course, all of the extended family is looking at me going like, oh, this guy is not working. He's kind of not doing anything. He's not working towards anything. So that's kind of difficult because I'm not earning, but at the same time, I have to commit and I have to retry on that. So I did that um, from the other day and my girlfriend is very organized, got this sorted out in one day. When was it? I think it was kind of, it was Tuesday when I first kind of, oh my God, I've not got routines. This is awful and just blah, 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 threw it all at them. Um, and I've had a few moments like that in the last few months, kind of like, meltdowns we call them kind of um, another one that I had is a complete shutdown you can call it an autistic shutdown I just closed off into myself for 20-30 minutes um, that was when we were dealing with the student loan company which we have been dealing with I have struggled all my life to explain myself to bureaucracy and to deal even with the most basic things like a single form can take me months to fill in. It took me months to fill in my kind of um, passport application form uh, to become an Irish citizen and to get an Irish passport. It took me months for that uh, a couple of years back and that is always invariably the case and so I haven't been communicating with these student loan people and I could be absolutely screwed from, from that failure to do so. 
but that is absolutely uh, in connected with uh, my my difficulties with executive function, uh, which means that I'm often kind of either working cash in hand in the underground economy because community economies look after people in the way that bureaucratic economies and uh, and state economies don't always do, and um, the state is doing everything it can to, to shut down these kind of you know local community um, economies and things like that. In any case, that's where I am. This is where we are now. Um, the last thing I'll talk about today is an idea that I've had recently uh, for... or it's, it's an idea I've had for a while, but I'm actually trying to, to explore it a little bit more at the moment, and that's to try to simply talk about other... talk to directly using um, voice over IP. I don't know how you, you say that differently. Not Skype, but uh, something called Jitsi. I'm trying to interview people who have some experience of emigrating um, to the UK uh, from other countries, possibly starting out with my parents who did so in the 1960s from Ireland, uh, and hopefully branching out either to their neighbours who came over from Jamaica, or to others who are connected with the Windrush uh, generation who came over from um, the Caribbean and, uh, and other countries of the Commonwealth um, in the same kind of period and from, from the 50s and uh, it was in the 40s, maybe, early 50s. I'm not sure exactly when the Windrush generation began, but at the moment uh, the British government is doing everything it can to push them out. And actually, I found something interesting on Margaret Thatcher's Wikipedia page. Um, if you look at the section where she was an MP from 1959, was it? Something like that. If you look at that section, and you can find her comments about Enoch Powell's River of Blood speech, which was made, I think, in Wolverhampton in 1968, something like that, and became um, very famous for saying that there would be rivers of blood if we continued to have um, immigration from the Commonwealth states, where, incidentally, uh, there were rivers of blood where, where, when England went over there to control their populations. Um, and in any case, kind of Margaret Thatcher had some sympathy for his views, but not for the way they were expressed, okay? Because there are more, I guess, um, socially acceptable within the mainstream ways to express racist views that the Tories have been doing for many years. But essentially what that means is the current Windrush problem is... Um, simply an extension of the Thatcher revolution. And it was a revolution, as I'm talking about right now in the uh, essay that I'm writing, which is really not about Bob and although I have obsessed about that, and though it has some... It's about everything. It's, it's really... It's kind of about everything that I've uh, experienced in my life in the last 20 years or so, um, and I might be able to struggle it into shape, and I might not. We'll see. Um, but that's one of the things that I'm working on right now. Um, in terms of those videos, I hope that I will, I will make some kind of um, statement soon. It kind of scares me what I'm trying to do with that, but a lot of the stuff I'm trying to do with my account, it does scare me right now. And I will have to make an announcement about that and maybe move forward with it, maybe initially by kind of interviewing my parents and their experience of uh, coming over. You'll hear the, the, the lift right now, I apologise. Uh, of coming over from Ireland. Um, but for now, I'm just introducing you to the uh, Marginalia HQ with all the noises that you'll hear um, around. And I guess I'll just give you a, a scoot through the room because it'll be changing over the next few weeks. And, uh, and we'll call it a day there. So I'll keep you posted again sometime soon and try and keep these videos short. Um, and thank you for watching.